There is a bison on the road. Look, look, look. Good morning internet. It is quarter to ten I think in the morning and welcome back to the channel. I'm running a little bit late today because I was having breakfast this morning and I met such a lovely family and we were just chatting away. I think <laughs> we talked for like an hour so that's why I'm running a little bit late but all good. I think today the ride kilometer wise is not that big I think. 200 or 300 kilometers. Lots to see. I'm going to show you on the map what the plan is and then I'm quickly going to hit the road. So I am right here at some horse ranch here in Wyoming and today I want to end up in Gardiner which is just across the border into Montana. So today I'm going to ride through the huge Yellowstone National Park. Okay, let's go. Oh, I'm so excited about today. Really, I've been looking forward to seeing Yellowstone for a long time. It's time to get our geek on again. The entire day, I think, because, well, Yellowstone for geologists, oh, it's gonna be so, <laughs> it's gonna be so interesting. Also, Yellowstone uh, is, Yellowstone National Park is the oldest national park because it was the first national park actually founded. So that automatically makes it the oldest one. So it's quite a big deal. Let's get ready, 283 Ks. I was already feeling a few specks of rain, so I put my rain jacket on again, just in case. I wouldn't be surprised if I catch a little bit of rain today, but let's hope uh, I get lucky like in the last video and it's mostly sunshine. One last look at the mighty Tetons. There's a bear, a bear with three cubs. <gasps> three cubs. Oh, I can't believe it. <gasps> this is the first bear I ever see. See there, she's coming towards the road. <gasps> oh, this is amazing. Look at the babies, look at the babies. Look at them. This is amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm only on the road for like 10 minutes and I see this. Incredible. They're so close. Oh, she's coming. She is coming. I just can't over the fact that I already saw a grizzly bear with three babies. And now I'm looking at this. Amazing, amazing. And, and she was close, like, she was very close. Maybe 30 meters? No, maybe a bit more, 40 or 50 maybe. And look at this, wow. Oh wow, look at that river. And at the park entrance, the girl actually told me that uh, yesterday it was snowing here pretty hectically. So it seems to be already melted. Or maybe it didn't really stay on the road. But today seems to be a, a better day. Better weather, so... I'm just so stoked! <laughs> oh, I can't believe I saw a grizzly bear with three babies. And then I'm riding in Yellowstone National Park. It's amazing to be here. Really amazing. Look at it. Wild! Have a look at this. <laughs> you see all this ice here? This lake is partially uh, frozen still. On the back it's open, but the more you go towards this side, you see all that ice. And you know, all this ice, it makes me feel like I'm already riding around the Arctic, <laughs> which I'm not. 
really awesome. All right, let's go and explore. So Yellowstone National Park has over 10,000 geothermal features of which 500 geysers, which is the highest concentration in the world. But besides geysers, there are four other types of geothermal features that you can find here in Yellowstone. So hopefully I'm gonna see all of them. So those other types are hot springs, which are pools of hydrothermally heated water. Then you get mud pots, which are hot springs that are acidic enough to dissolve the surrounding rock. And usually they lack water in their system. Then you got travertine terraces, which are also hot springs, but they rise up through limestone, dissolving the calcium carbonate and depositing that as calcite. And the fifth feature are fumaroles, which are basically steam vents. So they lack water in their system, uh, which is why they only release steam. And well, then of course we have geysers, which I started this story with, which are also hot springs, but with restrictions in their plumbing. And that causes them to periodically erupt to release all the pressure that has been built up. You might be wondering why all of this is here and why you get earthquakes, volcanisms, wow, look at this, <laughs> and all of that happening here. So I think we should talk about that. So I'm thinking maybe I should, maybe I should make a schematic drawing to kind of explain what's at the base of all of this. I'm now actually riding on the shores of uh, I think this is called Yellowstone Lake. So I'm gonna try and find a spot to uh, stop and uh, try and make a drawing. <laughs> so I found a quiet spot. So to answer the question, what on earth is going on in Yellowstone? Um, I'm gonna draw the earth. <laughs> Let me see. I am terrible in drawing circles. Okay, this is the earth. <laughs> So the distance from where we are kind of standing here, um, okay, draw a little, okay. Here on top till the center of the earth, is this the center? Maybe here. That's about 4,000 miles or in kilometers, what is that, 4,000 miles, 6,400? Okay, I'll do it in miles. 4,000 miles till the center of the earth. So right in the middle, you have the core, the inner core, something like that. And this uh, has a diameter of uh, 750 miles. So this inner core is made out of nickel and iron and it's extremely hot, but it's also solid because of the immense pressure in the center of the earth. And uh, then you get a slightly bigger outer core, which is uh, 1400 miles in diameter. And that's also made out of iron and nickel, but this is actually molten. Well, and then the next layer, I'm gonna kind of draw it like that. This is the mantle, which is 1800 miles thick. And that mantle is a dense, hot, semi-molten layer of rock. And then finally, on top here, this is called the crust. And the crust is about three to 48 miles thick. And that's where you find the continents and the sea floor. And that finally brings us to plate tectonics. So the crust and the upper mantle, they contain the plates. And when two plates collide, usually what happens is that you get an area of subduction. So one plate slides underneath the other one. And because continental plates are less dense, they are a bit more buoyant. So when you have a continental plate and an oceanic plate, the oceanic plate will usually slide underneath the continental plate. So for the last 16 and a half million years the North American plate has been slowly moving westward and about two million years ago that resulted in that the Yellowstone area in this place the plate has moved right on top of a very shallow magma body and that's the driving force for all the volcanism and all of these features that you see in this area right now. Well that was some truly terrible drawing right there. Let's get riding again. So anyway, the magma chamber that is sitting right underneath Yellowstone here is about 40 kilometers by 80 kilometers big. Oh, this is a <laughs> little circle. So 40 kilometers by 80 kilometers, so it's a huge area. And the top of the chamber sits about eight kilo kilometers underneath the ground surface here. And the bottom of the chamber at about 16 kilometers deep. But that chamber is not entirely filled up with fluid magma. So it, it's only partially melted rock. 
only about 20% is melted and the rest is just solid. Very hot, but solid. So I am now close to one of the most iconic features of Yellowstone National Park, I think, which is the old faithful geyser. It is erupting every but I think every between 60 and 90 minutes, something like that. And the closer to the eruption point, the better they can predict it. And it's gonna erupt in about 10 minutes. So I climbed up this mountain to an observation point. So I can kind of see it from above. So let's uh, watch the eruption. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> oh, that is mental, look at that. usually somewhere between a minute and a half and four minutes. Can you imagine? All right, I'm going down the mountain again, back to uh, Alaska, where I left all alone at the bottom. And I must also keep an eye out for wildlife because there are bison everywhere. I haven't seen bison yet today, but they're around. There is some evidence of bison in the area. There's two of them. One over there, and one over there. Beautiful creatures, right? There is a bison on the road. Oh man, it's gonna, it's gonna approach me, or not? Look, look, look. <gasps> it's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, that was so close. Oh man, it was looking at me. It was giving me the side eye. <laughs> oh man. Whee! They are just gorgeous, right? It's literally five meters away from me. <laughs> Beautiful. There is a lot of snow here still, hey. Unbelievable. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, <laughs> it starts, uh, well, what is it? It's actually hail. Small little hail starts. There's barely any clouds, so. Ah, see, it already stopped, I think. <laughs> I still haven't seen a uh, bison calves though. I would guess they it would be seasoned, but all I see is like the the big bulls, like these ones. No babies. Where are the babies? Oh wow, this is one big boy. <laughs> Look at him. Look at this. Hi guys. <laughs> so um, I wanted to go in here because it's a dirt road. But like all the other dirt roads, there's a, there's a gate in front. Beautiful, right? They're huge. So I'm now actually at the place that I was looking forward the most because this is a geothermal feature that I have never seen before. Most of the other stuff in Yellowstone I've already seen somewhere else, but not this one. And these are the travertine terraces that I talked to you about before, where I explained that geothermally heated water rises up through limestone, it dissolves the limestone and becomes saturated with calcium carbonate. And as the water rises to the surface, the temperature and the pressure drops, and that allows carbon dioxide to escape at the surface. 
It's almost like if you're opening a soda can. And that's when you get this. So you can see the water from the hot spring coming out through there. And every time that the flow of water is blocked, it's going to search another way. And that also causes that every day that you come here, it looks a little bit different. So the terraces are always changing in shape because the water will find different paths. Amazing, right? This is so cool. This is the first time I see it. Amazing, right? Oh, this is so cool. There are not a lot of places in the world where you can see this thing. This is probably the most famous place in the world. And then, of course, you have a very famous place in Turkey. But this is rare and it's just amazing to see. Here you can see it in a little bit smaller scale. See the water flowing here? It's already creating uh, mini terraces over here. So just at this location alone, there is two tons of calcium carbonate flowing every single day. Amazing! <laughs> mm. Really, really happy I saw this. So it's about uh, nine kilometers to uh, Gardener from here. Uh, that town is just outside of uh, Yellowstone, just uh, on that side, I think. So I'm gonna stay the night there. I am gonna end this video too because I'm really tired. It was a very long day. Oh, look, 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 an elk. Look, elk, 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 here, here. They're big, eh? Such big deer. Oh, it has a little calf. It is a baby calf standing in the shrub. You probably don't see it. I'll leave her alone. Don't want to freak out mama. So I'm gonna ride these last few k's, find a place to stay and figure out what's gonna happen from here. So that was it for today. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video. Hey cutie. Hi. Hi there. You are cute. <laughs>